Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Rudy Space. I am Dr. Samandar Sumhanti and today we will discuss about the bootstrap air cooling system. The bootstrap air cooling system finds extensive application in transport air taps and it is actually a modification of the simple air cooling system. So it has all the components of a simple air cooling system. Apart from that, it does have a second heat exchanger and it does have a second compression. The cooling turbine, instead of driving the air fan, actually drives the second compression. So the essential components of the bootstrap air cooling system are your diffuser, your compression, your combustion chamber, your turbine, you do have two heat exchangers, you do have the second compression and you do have the cooling turbine. So any air trapped cooling system should improve the gas turbine cycle because gas turbine cycle is very important to run the air trapped. So now what we will do, we will discuss how the fluid flow is taking place and then we will discuss the entire process with the help of a temperature entropy diagram. So first the ambient air flows through the diffuser. Diffuser is a smoothly varying section which converts the kinetic energy into pressure energy. So after passing through the diffuser the pressure of the ambient air is increased and that is what we call your ram air. Then this ram air enters the compression. In the compression it is compressed and due to compression the pressure and temperature is significantly raised. Out of the total compressed air, a part of the compressed air is taken to the combustion chamber. In the combustion chamber heat and fuel is added to it. As a result, combustion of the air fuel mixture takes place and the pressure and temperature of the gas is raised. Then that is taken to the gas turbine where it expands and develops mechanical power which actually runs the aircraft. Then the remaining part of the air actually passes through the heat exchanger, first heat exchanger and a fraction of the ram air is actually used to cool the compressed air. So, as the compressed air enters the heat exchanger, it transfers heat to the ram air that is entering the heat exchanger. As a result, the temperature of the compressed air is actually reduced. Then this ram air actually leaves through the exit zone. Then this air is then taken to the second compression. In the second compression, it is further compressed and the second compression is provided to raise the pressure of the air. Then this enters the second heat exchanger. In the second exchanger, heat exchanger, the air is cooled by a fraction of the ram air. You can see that out of the total ram air, some amount of ram air is withdrawn. Part of that is used to cool the air in the first heat exchanger and the second part is used to cool the air in the second heat exchanger. So here after transferring heat to the ram air, it is further cooled and the ram air actually leaves through the exit jet. After cooling in two stages, in the first and second heat exchanger, the air whose temperature has been significantly reduced actually enters the cooling turbine. In the cooling turbine, it expands and the power that is developed is actually used to run the 
second compression. This air then enters the cabin or cockpit. You know that the temperature of the air is significantly reduced on account of two phases of cooling taking place in two heat exchangers. So when it enters the cabin or cockpit, it receives heat from the space to be cooled as a result providing the desired effect. Now we will discuss the entire system with the help of a TS diagram. So you do have five pressure conditions. The pressure conditions are ambient pressure, cabin pressure, ram pressure, main compression pressure and second compression pressure. Now process 1 to actually represents the ram compression that is taking place in the diffuser. In the ram compression no work is done upon the system and the compression is due to the set of the diffuser. And then it is taken to the main compressor where it is compressed from 2 to 3. 3, 4 represents the cooling that is taking place in the first heat exchanger. 4, 5 actually represents the compression that is taking place in the second compression. Then 5, 6 represents the cooling that is done in the second heat exchanger. Then 6, 7 represents the expansion that is taking place in the cooling turbine and 7, 8 represents the refrigeration that is produced in the cabin or cockpit. So for our convenience and simplicity, we have considered the compression and expansion processes to be isentropic. But in actual case, both the rack compression as well as the compression that is taking place in the main compression do take place with some increase in entropy. The same is about the compression that is taking place in the second compression. Similarly, as far as the expansion is concerned, the expansion also takes place with some increase in entropy. Now, the coefficient of performance represents the performance parameter of any refrigeration system. So, as far as the COP is concerned, COP is always the ratio between the refrigerating effect divided by the water. So, in this case, the Refrigeration is taking place in process 7 8. Now, the refrigerating effect is equal to the mass of air that is taken multiplied by specific heat at constant pressure multiplied by temperature difference. It enters the cabin or cockpit at 7 and lives at 8. So it is. T8 minus T7. And as far as the work done is concerned, work done is mass multiplied by specific heat at constant pressure multiplied by temperature difference that is T3 minus T2 that is the work done in the main compression. Now, the COP will be equal to T8 minus T7 divided by T3 minus T2. And if you consider the effect of irreversibilities, you have to make changes because then 2 will become 2 dash, 3 will become 3 dash, and similarly 5 will become 5 dash and 7 will become 7 dash. 
so accordingly you have to make changes in the coefficient of performance another thing that i would like to tell you that here you do have two compressors one is main compressor the second one is second compression but we do not take into account the work done in the second compression because this gets drive from the cooling turbine itself so the work done of the main compression is to be considered for calculating the coefficient of performance of the bootstrap air cooling system so in today's lecture we have discussed in detail how the system works as well as the cycle in ts diagram and also we have derived an expression for coefficient of performance of the cycle but still if you have any doubt please do put questions so that i will try to answer thank you very much for watching this video i would request you to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so till now i would further request you to share this video with your friends and relatives to improve its visibility hope to see you soon for another lecture on my youtube channel do this space